Hi everybody and welcome back to this channel where I share my top tips for PhD students and researchers to help you write research papers regularly for top journals in your field. And in this video I want to talk about how to write the conclusion to a research paper. And this is really important because it's kind of the last element in which you have a chance to make your final point state your final contributions of your paper, underscore the novelty of your research and really convince, you know, the reviewers that your paper should be accepted. So let's dive right in and I'll show you step by step how you can write a really good conclusion. So the first thing that researchers typically do in a conclusion is to restate either the main aim of the paper or the main result first, right? Sometimes people first state the main aim and then the result, sometimes people straight away state the main result of the, of the paper, right? And this is to kind of remind the reader of what the purpose of the paper was, because, you know, at, by this stage, you know, we've read the whole paper, so it's really good to kind of circle back to the introduction, and that helps you to build a coherent story as well, which is something that I've talked about in another video, right? And then, you know, you state the main result, of your paper and then you briefly again discuss that result right to highlight the contributions right so of course we've well, already presented your results you've already discussed them so in here we just want to be brief and we really just want to um, give the reader the main takeaway points from your paper and we want to highlight the contribution of your paper as much as possible how do we do that? Well, you know, you can say things like, you know, this paper contributes to, to make it very obvious, or this is the first paper that, right, to make it even more obvious what's, you know, what's the real contribution of your paper. Now, another important aspect of the conclusion is to also talk about the practical implications or the theoretical implications of your paper right so you know you want to link that back to the results of your papers the key findings and now think about you know what how can these results be used in practice right and how can how do these results contribute enhance the theory in your field right and again you want to be pretty obvious in here you know and I would devote a whole paragraph to it if possible and you can just say you know things like um, you know this paper the results of this paper have several practical implications for example and then you give the first practical implication right you can also use phrases like this means this suggests and so on right or these results can help a specific group of people too and then you specifically say you know how this can help them or these results further uh, build on the previous theories or they expand a previous theory or so on right so that's that's the another element to present practical theoretical implications of your paper crucially as well you need to point out the limitations of your paper now you might be wondering why would i be you know pointing out the limitations right at the end of my paper right isn't that sort of shooting yourself in the food and showing why your paper isn't a good paper well it actually shows that you know you're being objective it shows that you can think critically and what we want to do is you know when you present the the limitations of your study you want to also try to defend your approach right so if you you know if you say something like you know one of the limitations of this study was a small sample size, right? Nevertheless, right, um, the, the data analysis reveals, right, so despite the fact that we had a small sample size, we still want to defend our approach, right? So that's, that's something important to do when you present the limitations. You shouldn't just like make a list of limitations, right? Because that can get you into trouble. So present the limitation and try to defend your approach or minimize this limitation 
Alternatively, present the limitation and give suggestions for future research. So that's another important element of the conclusion, suggestions for future research. And they're kind of almost always connected to the limitations of your study. So if you say that, you know, one of the limitations of this study is a small sample size, then you can say that, you know, therefore future studies should attempt to have a larger sample size, right? Um, your suggestions for future research can also, however, be connected to the results. So maybe you got a result that is unexpected and interesting, and it suggests a, a, a different avenue for future research, right? So that you can also say that in the conclusion section. So to sum up, you know, in the conclusion, you want to restate the main aim, restate the main results and just very briefly discuss them. And then importantly, new things that you need to present is like practical implications or theoretical implications of your findings, right? Um, limitations of your research and suggestions for future research. And if you do that, then you will help to, um, you know, to further kind of highlight the contribution of your paper and also help you to build a coherent story throughout the paper. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to subscribe, hit the like button, and if you wanna work with me more personally, then schedule a free one-to-one -one consultation and we'll dive deeper into the problems that you're currently facing, um, pinpoint your exact goals, and then outline an action plan that will help you to get to those results as fast as possible. And the link to that free consultation is somewhere uh, below this video.